Okay, Merry Christmas sa inyong lahat. Do you notice grabe ang traffic ngayon? Oh, ba? Diba? Uh, siguro it is because people are excited to be able to go out after two years and nakakulong sa bahay. Excited din sila na pwede sila mag-shopping ulit. In fact, na rinig ko sa Divisoria sa Manila, sabi ng mga tao, anong social-social distancing? Wala na raw tayong social distancing. Pero, mas kinakakalabas yung mga tao, parang ang lungkot ng Pasko, no? Like, during the eve ng Christmas, we went to La Joy, and we decided to pass by uh, Jollibee. Alam mo, Joy, kung bukas sa, kung 24-7 ano yung Jollibee, may dala-dala kaming <laughs> chicken joy. <joke. laughs> <laughs> Pero as you go around, no, parang ang lungkot talaga. Walang ilaw, konti lang. In fact, you do not hear about Santa Claus anymore. So, naisip ko, bakit kaya? Na-COVID kaya siya. <laughs> Tapos, you don't hear him go around giving gifts, no? Siguro, isip ko, takot siguro siya sa Omicron. In fact, sa mga churches ngayon, most of the team that you hear, pinag-uusapan, is all about end times. And ang message nila is that we should be ready kasi babalik na daw si Jesus. And while that is a fair uh, message, parang ang lungkot ng overall atmosphere ng Pasko. Tapos, naisip ko pa, Jesus seems to be very quiet during this time. So, natanong, nagtanong din ako, na-COVID din kaya siya? Is he also keeping his distance because of the virus? You know, can you imagine Jesus would visit you in your dream na naka-face mask at saka naka-face shield? <laughs> Pero I could not I could not help but ask, where is Jesus in all of this? Before he physically ascended to heaven, in Matthew 28:20, he made the promise. Sabi niya, I will be with you until the end of the age. Pero parang hindi mo siya marinig ngayon. Is he taking back that promise because of the pandemic? Tapos, do you know the experts say that our problem is not over, pero hindi na siya tungkol sa COVID. Because most countries printed money in order to give away to people and buy vaccines, now the experts are talking about a major inflation that will lead to a global depression, worse daw than 2008. In 2008, the first time pumalo ng 60 pesos ang gasolina, yung premium. And ngayon, 60 pesos na ang gasolina and it will become worse pa raw. With all this happening, you know, inisip ko, siguro tama yung message, no? About the end times. And I hope we will pray that the world will end. Bakit? Para tapos na lahat. So that we can go to a better place. Pero while some people are scared about the coming future, some naman are very excited about the opportunities it brings. Siguro naririnig nyo na yun, Bitcoin, NFT. People are now talking about digital asset. Have you heard of that? They're not talking about land. They're not talking about digital asset that you can buy. So ang tanong ko rin, where is Jesus in all of this? Do you know that Jesus warned about these problems? Okay, can you go to John chapter 16? Verse 33, even before all this happened, si Jesus nagwar na in John 16.33. Sabi dyan, These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Sabi ni Jesus, while we are still on this world, we will have tribulation. And one of them is this pandemic. He did not say this to a particular generation. He said this to all generation. And lahat ng generation may kanya-kanyang problema. Kaya nga, I always warn you, if you notice, I will always say, be ready because calamities will come. I do not tell you to be ready because the end of the world will come, but I tell you, calamities will come. Pero walang sinabi si Jesus na because of this tribulation, the world will end. In fact, I've told you this before, that there were worse and bigger pandemics in the past. The Black Death 
killed 200 million people. The Spanish flu killed 50 million people. So if you think about it, this pandemic is really tame. Kaso lang grabe yung takot. And I just feel it is heightened by the internet. Na maski wala kang dapat katakutan, like, like for example, sa Bukidon, wala kang naman masyadong cases dito, pero natakot tayo because of Manila and other places. Alam mo, God never promised a problem-free life. Pero what I like about John 16, sabi niya, don't worry, I have overcome the world for you. Parang sinasabi niya, I will remain in control. Okay ba yun? Pero you think about it, in control. If he is in control, then why are there so much suffering? In fact, if the cases of COVID is not very strong dito, because of the COVID, we're now suffering economically. Like even Del Monte is suffering, walang fertilizer, walang, uh, I, I, I think, I, siguro walang mga, mga ibang other supplies ng panglata or, or, or export. Pero in John 16.33, sabi ni Jesus, take courage. Pero how can you take courage if the world is collapsing around you? Pero he then said, no, if you go back to John 16.33, meron siya magandang sinabi niya. Sabi niya, these things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. Look at that verse carefully or look at that statement carefully. Ulitin ko ha, sabi niya, These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. Sabi niya, in spite of the tribulation, gusto niya, may peace tayo. I'm happy na most of you have peace. But that is not true for most people around the world. Most people are really panicking, especially itong Odet, no? Yung Odet, grabe talaga siya. Last Friday, we had a Christmas lunch sa farm. And very happy kami. Walang nangyari sa farm. Yung mais namin, hindi humiga. Yung kapitbahay namin, mais nila, nakahiga na. And parang walang nangyari. If you look at what Jesus said, sabi niya, I want you to have peace. But ang tanong ko, will His peace come when He takes us out of this world and bring us to heaven? Wala siyang sinabi na ganun. Look at that phrase. How will you have peace? Ano sabi niya? Ano sabi ng phrase na yon? Sabi niya, I have spoken this to you so that you may have peace. Where will our peace come from? No, sabi niya, I have spoken to you. I've taught you things. You know, Jesus around us, does everybody have peace? No. Pero sabi niya, I have spoken this to you. Ang sinasabi niya, your peace will come from what I told the disciples that night. Not from His presence lang, because His presence is all over, and yet many people do not have peace. Sabi niya, it will come from the things I spoke to the disciples. Question, what was so special about that night? What was happening during that night? You know, He was having the Passover meal, His last supper on earth. That night, marami siyang tinuro sa disciples niya. In fact, mas mahaba siya kaysa Beatitudes. What do I mean? The Beatitudes took three chapters in Matthew. Alam niyo ba, itong tinuro niya lasted for five chapters. It started from John 13 hanggang John 17. All of that, was he was teaching them during the Passover that night, he talked about many things. He instituted the breaking of the bread. He talked about his death and resurrection. He announced the coming of the Holy Spirit. And then, sabi niya, I want you to be fruitful. And then, tinuruan niya sila about the vine and the branches. Can you turn your Bibles to John 16, verse 1? Sabi pa niya, These things I have spoken to you that you may be kept from stumbling. You know, if He doesn't want us to stumble, the best thing He can do for us is remove this terrible tribulation, di ba? so that we can go back and enjoy life again. So, ang tanong ko pa rin, where is Jesus in all of this? Why is life so difficult, especially to, uh, to many people? 
I'm realizing the problem with Christianity today, many of us believe na si Jesus is only concerned about our spiritual wellness and not about our lives here on earth. Kaya nga people are thinking, peace will only come if He takes us out of, of this world and bring us to heaven. Pero hindi naman yun ang sinasabi niya sa atin eh. And ang tanong ko parati, does, did, Jesus, did Jesus come to save us from this world? No, He came out to save us from His sin. Now, what, what does He want us to do in this world? Punta kayo sa si John 17. I've often read this for you. John 17, verses 13 to 18. Remember, this is still part of what He was teaching them during the Lord's Supper. Sabi niya sa verse 13. But now I come to you, and this thing, to you meaning to his father, and these things I speak in the world so that they may have my joy made full, made full, made full in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I do not ask you to take them out of the world but to keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the world. Ako, I, I, have, nothing, I have nothing against end times messages. Pero ang feeling ko parate, does it really matter? It will come. Does it matter? That do we have to know that it will come? No. Do you prepare for it? Can you prepare for it? No. Hindi mo alam eh. Di ba? You can never prefer, prepare for it. You prepare for it by living a good life every day. Jesus told His Father not to take us out of this world. And sabi niya, I am sending you to the world. Tanong ko, sadista ba si Jesus? You know, Christmas ngayon. In spite of all my questions, I'd like to connect what is happening today to His birth. We are supposed to remember His birth and celebrate. So let me just connect what He said on the night before He died to what the angel said before He was born. Can you go to Matthew chapter 1? Babasahin natin verse 18 hanggang 23. Sabi ng verse 18, Now the birth of Jesus was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with a child of the child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man, not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with the child and shall bear a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which translates means God with us. Alam mo, para sa akin, the best part in what the angel told Joseph is that Jesus is God's assurance that he will be with us always. Para sa akin, this is a better message because I know I will continue to sin. Until I die, I will sin. I wish I could be stronger, but I know I will still fail many times. But it is comforting to know that He will be with you or He will be with me to help me as I struggle through my sins and also to help me through the tribulations the world will bring. So, if Jesus is with us... <clears throat> Why is he not doing anything to stop our problem? Diba? That's a fair question, diba? 
you know, I want you to, if you don't mind, I want you to close your eyes. Uh, can you close your eyes? And then imagine Jesus is standing beside you. So happy ka. Because you know, He can save you from all your concerns. Hindi ba? Now you can open your eyes. Okay? So nakita mo, andyan sa tabi mo. So you ask Him. You ask Him to take away all your hurts and deliver you from your tribulation. Did He answer you? Not yet, di ba? Di ba? Okay? Pero di ba, you know, when we ask Him to take away our tribulation, ni-imagine ko, ano mo kayo sinasabi niya? Kasi hindi niya sinasagot eh. You know, andun lang siya, and then He's just smiling. Sabi mo, Lord, remove all my hurt. And then, ginitian ka lang. Ano sinasabi niya sa'yo? What do you think is He is telling you? Oh, pero when you ask Him, oh, deliver me from my problem, nginitian ka lang. Can you turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 11? We'll read again a, ver- a set of verses that I have been discussing with you for the past few months. Matthew 11, 28 hanggang 30. Okay? It reads, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We are told to understand what Jesus is saying that we should imagine two bulls. Diba? Isang malaki and matanda, isang bata. They share the same yoke, one yoke lang. The older bull and the younger one is supposed to walk together. Pero who decides where to go? The older and the bigger, di ba? Who decides how fast they will walk? The bigger. What should the younger bull do to enjoy their walk? Ano dapat niyang gawin? Sabay ka lang. What will the older bull do when the younger bull decides to go his own way? Anong, anong gagawin niya? Will he pull? What will the older bull... When the younger bull decides to make his own plan, what will the older bull do? Oh, stop! Does he have to scold the younger bull? Kailangan ba niya pagalitan? No, he will just stand there, di ba? What will make the older bull or the bigger bull move again? Anong tingin nyo? Dapat decide yung move. The younger bull should decide to give it a Oh, he all will only move when the younger bull agrees to go where he is going and to walk according to the pace he wants to walk in. I believe this is what Jesus is waiting for us to do. You know, when you tell him, Lord, ito gusto ko mangyari, ito ko gusto mong gawin. And then, hindi siya nagsalita. He wants us to yield to him and agree to go where he is going and walk according to the pace that he wants us to walk in. You know, as we struggle through this pandemic, the world has been asking God to provide the solution so that we can go back to normal. You know, the world has been praying that He gives us the vaccine that will fight off this virus. Dami ng bakuna, no? And then sabi nila, pag ganyan ng bakuna, the world will go back to normal. Has it gone back to normal? No, because hindi sila makahabol dun sa variant, eh. Mamaya, meron, mamaya, may variant na naman. Hindi sila makahabol sa variant. And all we have been asking is, give us a good vaccine. I asked you this before. When you ask God for something, but He does not answer, did He answer you or not? Ano answer? No, no, di ba? Ano ang sabi niya? Ang sinasabi niya, when He doesn't answer, sabi niya, either you change your prayer or you change your attitude. Bakit change attitude? Anong, anong change attitude? Kasi pwedeng tama yung prayer eh. Why is He telling you change your attitude? No, because pwede nang tama yung prayer eh. Kung mali attitude mo, hindi ka ready for the prayer. So you're asking for something that you may not be ready for. 
Tama yun. Let, Lord, we want to go back to normal. Pero what will happen if we go back to normal? You know, I realize when you ask the question, where is Jesus in all of this? You know, He's just been there. He's always been beside you. But Jesus does not stand to correct your mistake or remove the consequences of your actions. Instead, He is there inviting you to walk with Him because He will show you a better way. Let me explain this. Let me explain this. Do you remember the story of the widow of the son of the prophet in the in First King chapter four? Alam niyo yon, yung iniwana ng utang ng mister niya na namatay, because the lenders are have come to take away her children, she went to Eliza for help. Diba? What did Eliza do? Binigyan ba siya ng pera pambayad sa utang? Ano sinabi niya? What do you have? Oh, what do you have? Ano pinagawa sa kanya? Diba? He was asked to borrow vessels where she will store the oil that will that God will multiply. So, nag-multiply. Ano pinagawa? Pinabenta. Eh, kung may oil siya, hindi niya binenta. Magkakapera siya? Diba pinabenta sa kanya para mabayaran? So, what did God ask her to do? A work. Tinuruan niya gumawa ng pera para makabayad. Ano ang mangyayari pag binigyan siya ng pera pambayad? Oh, uutang na naman siya, tapos babalik na naman siya kay Eliza. You know, the world has been asking God to remove the consequences of our mistakes. What do I mean? Chabi can correct me in this, but you know, in theory, the viruses of animals should not transfer to humans. Yung virus ng paniki, hindi pwedeng pumunta yon sa tao. Let, let me give you an example. Today, what's devastating the swine industry is African swine flu. Do you know that African swine flu has no effect on you? You can eat a pig with African swine flu. Now, why is it dangerous? Kasi pag makakain yung baboy, yung leftover natin, Mahawa sila. Do you know how African swine flu started? It started from Manila Hotel. Nag-import sila ng ha, mga baboy, maski saan, na merong African swine flu. Ang practice nila, meron silang tagatapon to a place na ililibing. Itong bright na driver, pumunta sa Bulacan, binenta sa isang malaking farm. So, mamaya na hawa, mamaya nag-spread na African swine flu does not harm you. It's a virus for animals. God is bright. God is truly full of wisdom. Ang sakit nyo, hindi pupunta sa hayo, pag sakit ng hayo, kaso lang, some crazy scientists experimented on mixing the virus of the animal to humans. Now, why do you do that? Because it has a, it has a good benefit. Anong good benefit? Kung gusto nilang pagalingin ng tao, they can now use that virus to as an agent to spread it. But it can also be very dangerous. So ngayon, nagkaloko-loko na. And then, we are telling Jesus, Lord, can you change the situation and remove us from our tribulation? How will the world respond if God gives an immediate solution to the pandemic? We will do it again. And then ask Him for help again. You know, as we end the year, sana you'd look to Jesus and say, Lord, where are you going? Sama ako. Pero do you know when you ask Jesus, where are you going, hindi ka sasagutin? Alam niyo ba yun? You know, God doesn't want you to know the future. Bakit? Why? You can become complacent. You can become overwhelmed. Or then you can go ahead and do things your way. So ang gusto lang ni God, just walk with me. Oh, one step at a time. And enjoy the journey. So as I end, may tanong ako sa inyo. 
Are you struggling with something today? And you feel down and heavy laden? You know, I want you to be assured that Jesus is just beside you. He will never leave you. The reason you are struggling is because you have been trying to decide where you are going. So He will just be there waiting. If you decide to go where you are going, pag tinignan mo lang siya, He will just smile at you, waiting to either you change your prayer or you change your attitude. Waiting for you to say, Lord, wherever you're going, sama ako. Do not ask Him what His plans are because He will not tell you. Ang gusto lang niya, you walk with Him every day. If you have committed a sin that is haunting you today, so you're asking God to remove the consequences. While He has not removed it, ang suggestion ko, just do what is right a day at a time. Did you make a wrong decision recently that's hurting you? So you're asking God to correct your mistakes. What should you do? While you're waiting for Him to correct it, do what is right a step at a time. You know, ako, I, always, I, I always like going back to Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. Tiyan na sabi sa Matthew 6, 34. Sabi niya, Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. As 2022 comes, decide to walk with Jesus and enjoy the journey. Do not worry about the future. It is not your concern. Do not worry about the end of times. He did not even discuss it. Do you know that? He never talked about the end of times. He talked about the end of the temple. Diba? When they went out and said, Lord, when will this be? He talked about the end of the temple, but he never talked about the end of times. Yung mga apostles lang ang nag-discuss. Now, should we be concerned about the end of times? Maybe. But I would rather be concerned about what the gospel said. Di ba, mas importante, wait, let's be concerned about yung concern ni Jesus. So ako, I always want to, uh, when, during Christmas, I always remind myself, He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. So therefore, as long that He's with us, okay na tayo. You should not be concerned about your future. Because if you walk with Him a step at a time, it will fall into place. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to remember your birth, to remember the birth of your Son. And we also like to thank you for reminding us that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. So we are grateful, Lord Jesus, that you always remind us that you will be with us always until the end of the age. And I pray that we will always honor you by just agreeing to walk with you one step at a time. Allow us to enjoy life journey with you, dear Lord. Thank you again. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.